Cabinet Secretary. I think we can now move on to um, some of the questions that we've been asked. As I said, I'm going to take those that came to us through social media first and then uh, obviously turn to yourselves. Um, and there may be in some of those questions, um, Cabinet Secretary, where you might want to say um, a few words yourself. So the first question comes from, now these are all um, Twitter ones, so I'm going to have to read out their Twitter, whatever it is. What is it you have on Twitter? I've got one, but it's how you're known. So the first is from HMN001, uh, and the question is, when are we getting an A&E for the northwest of the city? New Southern, Glasgow Royal, and Royal Alexandra, all too far away. Um, now, obviously at Golden Jubilee, we're very pleased uh, when um, uh, patients and potential patients recognize the quality of care, but that is not a decision that sits with me or anyone in Golden Jubilee. I don't know, Cabinet Secretary, if you'd like to say anything. Yeah, I'm happy to say, as people will probably know, there is a clinical services review going on for the north of the River Clyde, and obviously, uh, once I receive that review, we'll be looking at it because obviously, if there are recommendations for major service reconfiguration, we can be approved by me in any case. But I am very, very conscious of the strongly held view uh, north of the river in relation to the provision of accident and emergency services, and the view that existing arrangements are unsatisfactory because of the distance. Have we'll have that very much in mind when uh, we look at the, any proposals coming out of the review and we'll consult widely before we make final decisions and before we implement uh, the recommendations or a, a variation of the recommendations coming out of that review. But I am very, very conscious uh, of the issues around this. Thank you. Our next question is from Ria F8. Um, and it is the Vale of Leaven report is due to be released shortly. Is this likely to impact on the Golden Jubilee National Hospital? I, I would guess there are perhaps two components to that question, and I'll ask Jill to deal with the first part, and again, Cabinet Secretary yeah. might want to say a word. Um, it absolutely will impact on the Golden Jubilee in terms of any report that comes out about patient safety and improving quality of care. Um, you, you may recall the Mid-Staffordshire report that came out and other reports that have highlighted failings in some hospital services. So any recommendation from any report, and this would be one, that when it's published, our senior team will take it and review it and look at all of the recommendations and lessons learned. Uh, we take that through our clinical governance committee, we'll talk to our clinical teams about it, and we'll take recommendations to our board on any areas that we are not complying with or that we could improve on. So absolutely it should impact on every hospital around the country, this report, and take it forward. The second aspect to the answer would be about if the report then highlights if there's anything we can do here practically in terms of delivering of services to assist in moving forward, then of course we would welcome that discussion in going forward. Okay. Uh, as you probably know, this report is going to be published in the week beginning the 24th of November by Lord Maclean, who has led the inquiry. I, I have not yet seen any draft or any copy of the report, so I honestly do not know what is in it. I expect to get a draft a week before it is published. Uh, but obviously, we will take very, very seriously both the conclusions and the recommendations arising from the report. Uh, and of course, we've already implemented very substantial improvements, particularly in relation to health, health acquired infection control uh, right across the National Health Service in Scotland. Since this uh, incident, these incidents happened at the Vale of Leven, for example, we have massively expanded the National Patient Safety Programme. We have massively reduced the incidence of both MRSA and C. diff, and we have made other major improvements across the entire health service in Scotland, including in and around the Vale of Leven and this part of the west coast of Scotland. But obviously the report will, I am sure, make a number of recommendations, and we obviously will take those very seriously with a view to implementing them once we see the detail. Thank you. Our next question mm. comes from the same person and it asks, uh, could you also tell me if there are any future expansion plans for the Golden Jubilee? 
Um, so I touched on that briefly, but Jill, could you answer that, please? Yeah, yeah. Um, we get asked this all the time. Last year we celebrated our 10th year anniversary in the NHS, and I've been here from almost day one, as many of the staff in the audience probably have as well. We have not had one month or one year where we have not expanded, and we will continue to do that but do it safely and do it high quality. Um, and that doesn't always mean you need additional buildings and capacity. Sometimes it does, and that's when we come to people like John Conahan with really robust business cases and look for some funding to support it. But uh, at the moment, we're just um, about to commence our phase four of orthopaedic expansion next month and recruitment of staff to take that forward and do many more hip and knee joint replacements. We're about to commence our next phase of ophthalmology expansion. We have, if any of you entered through the hotel entrance, you would have seen a mobile MRI scanner and we're looking to expand how many diagnostic examinations we can do. And over the next month or six weeks, we're about to take on board a, an extra few thousand patient operations on behalf of Orkney, Shetland, Grampian and Highland to help them through the winter and the high peak demands in orthopaedics, ophthalmology and some of the diagnostic. So I think we should always be looking to expand and always looking to do more as long as the, the demand is there and we can provide that capacity. Thanks very much. Um, our next question comes from David Thompson and uh, he asks, are there any plans for using stem cells to treat patients at the Golden Jubilee? So let, let me deal with that. Um, we're currently running a trial called the uh, CATCH AMI trial, which examines uh, stem cell applications for treating heart disease and, in fact, are the largest um, recruiters in the world uh, for that trial. And the second trial will be starting very soon in the near future. Um, we're also hosting a basic hip arthroplasty course, um, which will include a session um, looking at the use of stem cells in terms of preserving joints. So I think it's fair to say that we recognise the potential uh, value of the use of stem cells in the work that we do here at Golden Jubilee um, and are engaged in that research and those trials to test out um, the validity of its use in certain circumstances and the potential safe um, implementation of that. Our next question uh, comes from uh, Mary Hemphill, um, and it's a Facebook question, um, and it is uh, to ask um, what plans for patient participation within the SAC service, including volunteer work and patient group support for our in inspiring patient community. Um, she also goes on to say, I'm sure many patients would welcome the opportunity to share experience and life stories to help support others. And certainly it is true that our SACS patient community is a mutually supportive uh, and uh, a very well-informed community. Over the past year, we've continued to host um, SACS patient conference days um, and also have had patient representation on the regional implementation project, which is part of the uh, SACS network. We would be looking as we go forward to uh, involve patients in helping us develop the SACS uh, section of the Golden Jubilee website so that we can be sure that it is fit for purpose and has um, not only ease of access but the kind of information in, on it that patients would find most useful and helpful. And are also having a look now um, with our patients um, with long-term conditions about web applications to assist them in uh, continuing management of their own care and their own uh, knowledge of that care. Uh, many of our patients, including our SACS patients, um, follow uh, what we are doing through uh, our use of social media, Twitter, Twitter and um, Facebook and so on. And we will continue to look and seek their feedback in order to ensure that we can maximise the benefit of that for them but also to welcome their suggestions, but suggestions from any of our patient groups or users of our social media about how we can improve how we use that um, so that they can get the maximum benefit from those um, communication channels, which are particularly important for our patient group in its widest sense, who do not come from an, an easily accessible locality to us. They come from across the entire country of Scotland. 
And lastly, our final question in, in this social media section, if you like, is from Brian B Bradley, again via Facebook. And his question is, with just under half of the patients referred to the new TAVI Centre in Edinburgh since October 2012, actually receiving TAVI, is this an indication that the centre is being overwhelmed? And if so, are there any plans to extend this service? And how many TAVI experienced interventional cardiologists are currently based at the Golden Jubilee? So I'm going to ask Jill to answer that last part of the question uh, about the number of uh, TAVI experienced interventional cardiologists. And then Cabinet Secretary, I'll, I'll come to you. Yeah. Jill. Uh, uh, we currently have three consultants trained and skilled for this intervention. Two are cardiologists and one is actually a heart <laughs> transplant and cardiac surgeon. And they're maintaining their skills by going through to work with the team in Lothian, but also to go down south to centres down south that do this to keep their skills up to speed. Um, we could quickly bring other clinicians on board if there was a requirement for that, but it would require them having a refresher training programme. So we have three at the moment. And can I just say nationally, the throughput of patients at the moment is around 60 per year. We had anticipated that it would be over 100 by this time, uh, and we're looking and talking to health boards throughout Scotland to find out why the demand for the service isn't as high as originally predicted by them, and what needs to be done to stimulate the demand, because we're absolutely sure there are many patients who would benefit from TAVI who are not currently being referred to the service. Uh, obviously, originally we anticipated, because of the additional throughput we anticipated then, by now we had expected to appoint a second centre other than Lothian uh, on in the West Coast, which obviously I think uh, would have been the Golden Jubilee, uh, but we don't have the throughput at the moment to justify a second centre. Uh, but obviously, once Aileen Keel, the Acting Chief Medical Officer, has done her survey and had her, finished her discussions with the health boards throughout Scotland in this matter, we will uh, update people in terms of um, what she has found out and what uh, the way forward is in terms of improving uh, the throughput figures, assuming the demand is actually there. And secondly, if there is sufficient demand, whether we need a second centre and when we might need a second centre, if we need a second centre. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, so thanks to everyone who submitted questions through social media. It's now your turn. Um, and so if you do have a question, just indicate we've got a roving mic, uh, a roving Simon. Um, so please, are there any? Questions? Don't feel obliged, but if you have them. <laughs> yeah. We'll take the lady first and then the gent beside you. It's a very simple question. What's TAVI? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a really complicated clinical thing, and the medical director is sitting right in front of you and will tell you. So, 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 so it's, it, it, it's, it's a way of putting um, a heart valve which sits on the, the aorta, which is the main valve out of the heart. But instead of doing heart surgery, so you open up your chest, close the heart, and put the valve physically into the heart, you, you feed the valve in through an artery in, in, in the leg that falls on the inside the vascular system, so there's no need for an open operation. And if it goes well, patients can be at home within two or three days. And it is, it is, it is a minimally invasive form um, of, of surgery. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the gentleman sitting next to you also had a question. No, no, no. How many transplant operations took place in the past year? Uh, 19. 19 last. Our target was the 11, and we were delighted to exceed that target of 19 uh, with very good outcomes. Very good outcomes. Any other questions? If not, um, can I, for my part, on behalf of the board, thank you very much for taking the time um, to be here this morning and pass over to you, Cabinet Secretary, for any okay. final words. 